I'm involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. I play football, baseball, basketball, and I run track. I love the contact sport. I love the ability to get my, my feelings and aggression out throughout the hard day or hard week out at practice. I was a part of the, uh, the Westfield wrestling team when I was a freshman, and that's also the year when I played soccer. So it was been fun, and um, I'm going to play soccer again in my senior year, and uh, hopefully I will probably be the captain of the soccer team. I enjoy just spending time with my teammates and uh, getting to just rep the green and gold like everyone else has in the past. On Thursdays, uh, we get to go out and um, for the football team, and we get a, our chaplain out there. And uh, he does a great job, and I think on a Thursday that's great to do because it's a day for the game and you get to think about God and, and just choices in life, and that's kind of what the game of football is like. I'm involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. I play football, baseball, basketball, and I run track. I love the contact sport. I love the ability to get my my feelings and aggression out throughout the hard day or hard week out at practice. I was a part of the, uh, the Westfield wrestling team when I was a freshman, and that's also the year when I played soccer. So it was been fun, and um, I'm going to play soccer again in my senior year, and uh, hopefully I will probably be the captain of the soccer team. I enjoy just spending time with my teammates and uh, getting to just rep the green and gold like everyone else has in the past. On Thursdays, uh, we get to go out and um, for the football team and we get a, our chaplain out there and uh, he does a great job and I think on a Thursday that's great to do because it's a day for the game and you get to think about God and, and just choices in life and that's kind of what the game of football is like. I'm involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. I play football, baseball, basketball, and I run track. I love the contact sport. I love the ability to get my, my feelings and aggression out throughout the hard day or hard week out at practice. I was a part of the, uh, the Westfield wrestling team when I was a freshman, and that's also the year when I played soccer. So it was been fun, and um, I'm going to play soccer again in my senior year, and uh, hopefully I will probably be the captain of the soccer team. I enjoy just spending time with my teammates and uh, getting to just rep the green and gold like everyone else has in the past. On Thursdays, uh, we get to go out and um, for the football team and we get a, our chaplain out there and uh, he does a great job and I think on a Thursday that's great to do because it's a day for the game and you get to think about God and, and just choices in life and that's kind of what the game of football is like. I'm involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. I play football, baseball, basketball, and I run track. I love the contact sport. I love the ability to get my, my feelings and aggression out throughout.
10 minutes left to go in this second quarter. We haven't been running the clock at all, but the scoreboard is still correct. It is still nothing to nothing. Neither team able to mount much on offense, except for Westfield on that first drive. With that HDMI in your car? They'll come back out here to be I gotta ask him first and ten. Right there by Coach Chip Champion. How do you do changing the audio line? Yeah. On the computer on the camera. Starman over. And he's staring at it. He called a dragon. I know. Right on the, on the camera or on the. First and ten. They come out in that formation. Take the handoff to the fullback. Okay. To the tailback. And he is. Stop that for a minimal gain. Call it second and eight. That was Preston Jones on the carry. Uh, uh. is, yes. Second down and eight. And on the more wing T type formation. Oh, yeah. Eight to the quarterback's going to keep it. On the ten meter side, there's a flag down. All right, I'm trying to figure it out. Good, yeah. good open field tackle right there for his short pitch. Looks like we'll be about third and. But, uh, nope, there's a flag. Has Mike level A playing on a signal. It feels like holding good. Everybody's back. Yep, holding on Deerfield Windsor. That'll make it second and we'll say 20. Oh, I know, it's got function. I know, I'm pressing it. But nothing. Hold on. They're trying to keep it on the game. Right at the line, no game. Um, faders, decoration. Third down and. Mike level is about. Audio scenes as standard. So I don't know. Third and very, very long here for the Knights. Good job of this Westfield defense. Interesting formation here. Everybody on the line. Now I got it on manual. That's why I took that stuff off the screen. Wing T formation. Far back goes in motion. The quarterback has it. Being chased to the edge. And he will go nowhere. Good job of the defense now getting fooled right there by the, the fake handoff. Yeah, I mean, I know what you're talking about, but I, I can't see it. Let me get you to Scott. Hang on. Four will be first point. I'll control it, but he wants you to do something on the screen. At any rate, it's fourth and ten, and Deerfield will punt. I'll do it. Eight minutes, thirty seconds left in the second quarter. Okay. I'll try to keep giving you regular clock updates. He's going to try to figure all this out. AGC limit exposure. Uh, there's a way. There's a board program in the white balance. Forty. Not to the fifth. You get a small seam there. But now you're driven back. There is a flag on the play. Uh, Hunter Spence with your returner right there. Oh yeah. There's a uh, told left wing and say white there. Okay. So the officials will deliberate right now. Come on, Mike Lowe. Why can't I do anything with this? Mount the shotgun. 
there's only a piece of scrub on the left side. Good Fitzpatrick, and they saw that coming. They stacked up in the backfield, lost a yard or two. Good Fitzpatrick. Should be working for sure. This near side. And then we'll bootleg out to this side. Stepping up, throws out the flat and smaller could make the catch. That's a shame. He had a couple of yards if he was able to make that play, but he wasn't. Maybe third down 11. Great field position to start this drive, but they haven't been able to do anything with it. Can you do the thing? Actually lost a yard. Or you want me to do that while you're in there? Well, I'm staring down at three and out right now. Oh, 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 Four wide receivers in this formation. Only one tail. Just a straight back to the back. Made by Hunter Spence at the 20-yard line. 
This drive goes a lot better than our last one. 5.52 left in the first half. This field comes out in this offset eye formation. No, that's an off, that's an off line. Tight end right there. And this guy just forgot the snap count. That'll be five yards backwards for the Hornets. That wouldn't be a little if that had stayed in the two-point stance, but since he put his hand on the ground, he can't move. In case anybody was wondering what he's saying, he was on the people go, well, people go in motion. They snap all the time. They make that easy. Christmas, we decorated Christmas trees. Here to the Hornets' nest. Westfield just went up seven to nothing, and I got some. I can turn our first quarter. We didn't broadcast it, but we're doing our best. If we had broadcast it, it would have been brought to you by Flynn Energies. This second quarter, where Westfield has just gone up six. Thing was brought to you by Spillers Orthodontics. That is a low winding kickoff, and it will go into the end zone right there. We had a Woodland subdivision touchdown on that last drive. And a very long planner's first first down. For all broadcast is brought to you by Brandon Ford of Perry. So thank you for bringing that to us. And 
we will have the rest as the game goes on. First and 10 from the 20 for Deerfield Windsor. And I lost who had that ball, but run up the middle, give it off. That is Nick Singletary. He's a sophomore. It's a gain of four, second and six. Westfield just took a 7-0 lead. Five minutes left in the first half. Give off to the fullback again, and that hole is plugged up. He had nowhere to go. Third and six. Third down and six. We'll say a long five. Deerfield wins are coming out in a new formation. Three, two wide receivers to this left side and a stand-up tight end who might as well be. And it is yeah. coming out. He's staying in. Great play right there. Tried to go to the big tight end, number 87, Joe Morgan. Great coverage right there by the Hornets. And now I'm conscious of it. Every time I say right there, I get embarrassed. At any rate, the Knights are going to punt. Westfield's got a chance to add seven more, or even three more. You take another possession at this, game, at this point in the game. Takes a couple steps, punt is away. It's going to go over his head. He, that was interesting. Hunter Spence with an interesting punt returning tactic right there. It's like a security blanket. I keep going back to it. Westfield will have it first and 10 on their own 25-yard line. No, 30-yard line, excuse me. Am I, am I, have I not, have I just been talking to myself this whole time? Oh, okay. Everybody, I promise I've been providing commentary for the last 20 minutes of this game. And uh, if you want to hear all of that, you can go to midgasports.net and see what we've gotten. Pitch up the middle, carried by Ricky Black, I think. Was that number 11? That was Chris Kennis on the carry. Excuse me, I thought it was number 11. I'll read off my sponsors again since, since I uh, have not been broadcasting in the actual stream. Overall broadcast is brought to you by Brandon Ford of Perry. Thank you for sponsoring the entire game. Give off up the middle to Chris Kennis and gain of three or four. It'll be third and shorter. We didn't broadcast it, but if we had, it was would have been brought to you by Flint Energies. Se this second quarter is brought to you by Spillers Orthodontics. We earlier had a Woodland subdivision touchdown. It is seven to nothing Hornets. Westfield in a third and short. They will give it to Smallwood up the middle, and he had nowhere to go. They saw that one coming. May have lost a yard. Fourth and four, and Westfield's going to come out to punt. Like I said, everybody, this has been a bit of a mess. We're going to try to fix it at halftime, what we can. And if not, I've at least had fun. That snap goes way over Fitzpatrick's head. He's having to chase it. Morgan is coming. Still nobody has the ball. And Morgan fell on it at the two. And that's not good. 
It'll be first and goal from the two-yard line. Two minutes left in this game, and Westfield defense is going to have to stand real tall here. Excuse me, that was at the five-yard line where they're going to mark that ball. Nothing Fitzpatrick could do right there. That was three feet over his head. First down and goal from the five. Motion man, they're going to give it to him. That hole open for him, and that is a touchdown for the Knights. The turnover leads to points immediately. West, it looked close, but they're going to give it to him. Six to seven. There are two minutes left in the second quarter. This is number 35, Spears Wilson on to a tip the PAT. And he got it up and he shanked it. No good. Westfield still leads at a 7-6 with two minutes left. Well, so Westfield's probably going to have the lead going into halftime. You can hope and pray that they're going to hold on to it. We will go to a quick break and come back with more action here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. Tate was going regularly to his dentist. Our family dentist just mentioned that he had a severe underbite and he could require surgery in the future. We immediately made an appointment with Spillers Orthodontics. They brought up Invisalign. Dr. Spillers was very informative and all of the staff was very helpful and knowledgeable. Anybody who thinks that their child is too young to use Invisalign, they're wrong. I mean, if you can prevent any kind of surgical procedure for your child, wouldn't you want to do it too? Spillers Orthodontics. Welcome back here to the Hornets Nest. Westfield leading 7-6 to six after a mixed, missed PAT on that last touchdown by Deerfield Windsor. Got the ball at the five-yard line following a high snap on a punt attempt. And we know the scoreboard isn't right. For some reason, it's not letting us change it right now. There's, there's a lot going on, folks. Just bear with us. I promise you it is to 7-6. There are two minutes left in the first half. Back deep to receive for Westfield, and it's not going to get to him. That is Chris Kennis going to take that ball, and he's got a bit of a crease. And he will push the pile, and he'll be tackled at the 40, the 37-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for the Hornets. They haven't had a whole lot of success on offense other than one really long almost touchdown. He got tackled at the one, one long run by Hunter Smallwood was immediately followed with a quarterback sneak for a touchdown. That is really weird. First and 10 from the 37. Westfield needs another big play. Two minute drill is in effect here. Give it to him on the trap. Bursting at the middle is Fitzpatrick. He got to the secondary and fell forward mightily. And crosses midfield. He'll have it at the 47-yard line, first and 10 for the Hornets. And that clock's going to continue to run as soon as they set this football. We're at a minute 49, and the clock is going to wind. Westfield not showing too much urgency here, but you might want to see it. Linebackers creeping up. Give to Fitzpatrick again, and he is swarmed. He is absolutely swarmed. Lost a yard. Second down and 11. Second down and 11. We are cr approaching one minute left in the first half. Westfield needs, to, needs a big play here and then another one to get in the end zone. Driving back to Pack. Rolling to his right. And he pitched it to Smallwood. 
running for his life is Smallwood, and that's going to be a massive loss. And it looks like there was a personal foul of some kind. I don't, I don't know. It landed right at the feet of Beck Beckham, and might call a horse horse collar tackle here. I have no idea what the fouls are here. It, it almost looked to me like the defensive lineman who tackled Beckham. Yeah, they're going to call a personal foul, and that'll be an automatic first down. So it should have been a massive loss following a not very smart play by Beckham, honestly, but it's going to end up in a first down. I believe personal fouls are automatic first downs. No? No, they're not, but... <laughs> It's going to be second and three. 48.9 seconds left. Clock's going to wind. A big boon to Westfield there. Dropping back to pass. Screen play is on. Good blocking. He reads his blockers well. That's Chris Kennis on the carry. He gets out to the 27-yard line. Ready right, to be a first down there. Clock will stop again. Westfield's got to go fast here. They do not have the luxury of hurt, of huddling up, calling a play from the sideline and going. And now they're going to take a timeout. Smart move right there by Westfield. We will stay here. 36.2 seconds left. Westfield has one timeout remaining. You think they want to keep it in their pocket in case of a field goal attempt. As soon as this first half is over, we will have a short break and then we will launch right into our ABE group halftime show where I believe Kenny will probably join me for that. And we will try to, try to make it together in the second half. Kenny's trying to run the computer tonight in the absence of BT. Tyler Flowers hit a three-run home run, I'm learning. Like it's four to nothing. <laughs> it's, like listen, everybody does well. Everybody hits really well whenever Max Fried's pitching. He's got like a 4-0 ERA, but it, he's got 11 or 12 wins on the season. First and 10 from the 27-yard line going in. 36 seconds left. Quick pass, slant, caught it, hook and ladder, and he got out of bounds. That was a cool little play I haven't seen since middle school. Robert Kennis tossed it back to his brother. You run that little slant and just toss it back to a wide receiver coming across your face. And it worked there. Gain of five, and he got out of bounds, more importantly. So you can hold on to that timeout. Brett, if you're watching, Kenny's mad at you. Ooh. A lot of hard hitting on that play, but luckily the ball falls innocently enough to the ground. It'll be third down and five. I don't know if they are quite in Fitzpatrick's field goal range, but you certainly like to think he's got a strong enough leg. He would be slicing it inward from this left hash. Depending on who you talk to, that's either harder or easier or just as difficult. Depends on the kicker, and I don't know which one Fitzpatrick is. Hand off to the left. He will get tackled out of bounds, but he will have a first down. Bruising run right there from Fitzpatrick. That is, that is his favorite type of run. Six, 
First and 10 from the 16 yard line going in. You're definitely within field goal range now and you like to think you're in close enough to take a shot at the end zone if you want it. Beckham's gonna roll out to his right. Throws underneath, incomplete. Aiming for Smallwood. Might have been better that he didn't get that catch because he would have been tackled very close, very far inbounds and clock would have kept running and you like to see another chance. Second down and 10 from the 16. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left, one back in the backfield. Linebacker creeping up. Slaying over the middle, dropped. Dropped by Robert Kennis. And man, he probably would have had a touchdown if he was able to hold on to that ball. Great, great throw from Beck Beckham. Hit him right in the chest. Just couldn't hold on to it. Mm -hmm. Looked like it snuck up on him a little bit. Eight seconds left. Third down and ten. Dropping back. They're in max protection. Fade route. No good. Would have been pass interference, I think, but they're saying the ball would have been uncatchable. And that will bring on Robert Fitzpatrick with 3.8 seconds left. To try it. What did I say, Ryan? Is that uh, Robert Fitzpatrick. That's his father. Rob. Rob Fitzpatrick. This is Michael. This is Michael Fitzpatrick. Ryan. Ryan Fitzpatrick, just named starting quarterback of the Buccaneers. No, of the Dolphins, excuse me. Low snap. Got it up. And nowhere close. And he dropped the kick. The ball is down. We will have a quick break. Westfield leads 7-6. to six. We will come back with the ABE Group Halftime Show here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. On the field, a successful outcome is the ultimate goal for every team. At Houston Healthcare, our team of healthcare professionals is also dedicated to providing successful outcomes to the patients we serve each and every day. From Houston Medical Center, Perry Hospital, or one of our three med stops to the sidelines and locker rooms of our high school athletes, our team is focused on providing quality healthcare that leads to successful outcomes for the patients we serve. Houston Healthcare, advanced medical care closer to home. On the field. Tate was going regularly to his dentist. Our family dentist just mentioned that he had a severe underbite and he could require surgery in the future. We immediately made an appointment with Spillers Orthodontics. They brought up Invisalign. Dr. Spillers was very informative and all of the staff was very helpful and knowledgeable. Anybody who thinks that their child is too young to use Invisalign, they're wrong. I mean, if you can prevent any kind of surgical procedure for your child, wouldn't you want to do it too? Spillers Orthodontics. We decorated door decorations for the nursing homes here in Perry. And we have also, I've gone and cleaned up some of the parks around um, Perry. Community service is definitely valued at Westfield. What well, I like about Westfield is uh just the, uh, the family atmosphere that we have here. Uh, the teachers are just great, the coaches are great. Even though I was not here when I started school, I came in and it was like everyone acted like I had been here the whole time. It's an environment where everyone just accepts you and wants to get to know you like they would have known you like all of their friends that have been here since the beginning of grade school. I just like the atmosphere that you have here. Everybody, they truly care about you. Everyone in my grade, we're so close together. Um, I think of them as my brothers and sisters almost because they know me so well and I know them so well. I think the most important thing that happened to me um, while I spent my time in Westville is that I actually become a Christian and then um, I actually find my faith. And, um, and, and, I, and I think Westville 
it gave me such a great Christian environment that I can actually have the freedom to express my faith to The Middle Georgia Sports Network is excited to bring to you another year of live prep sports action. Whether it's on the gridiron, the diamond, or the hardwood, MGSN has you covered. For the past seven years, we have been there for region championships, state championships, and everything in between. We look forward to another seven years of coverage, as you can always count on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. Welcome back here to the Hornets Nest to this ABE Group halftime show. Westfield leading the Deerfield Windsor Knights 7-6 to six at halftime following a missed extra point by the Knights. And Kenny? it's good to join you finally. I know you're tired yeah. of talking. But, uh, <laughs> you know, they're in the first half. Again, can't apologize enough for the uh, technical difficulties, but, you know, it is what it is. We're, we're without our A-plus player. Frank B. Taylor. But uh, overall, good first half for Westfield. After last week going down to Terrell, losing that, that tough one, you know, 34-7, to they battled and they played hard. I like the gambles they took. They went for it, what, twice on uh, fake punts? Yep. Um, and if not for a bad snap on a punt, they'd probably be uh, – well, they are leading this game, but they would be up by a touchdown. Uh, the probably bad snap yep. over Michael Fitzpatrick's head gave them the ball at, what, the two-yard line? Yep. And uh, but other than that, I, I like the offensive rhythm. It seems much better. Good to see a big play. Uh, you saw uh, Hunter Smallwood run that ball all the way down. Poor guy couldn't even get couldn't get into yeah. the end zone, but he, he got him all the way there. That's the worst feeling when you get tackled at the one yard line. Not but, that I would know, but yeah, yeah, offensive linemen rarely get that chance, right? But uh, you know, he he's a good athlete, and having you know, he's not the the fastest runner, but. He's going to have to play that role in that split back set because Michael Fitzpatrick is definitely your bruiser. I mean, he's the guy who's going to get you the tough yards between the tackles. Smallwood can do that as well, but I think Smallwood's got better straight line speed than Michael because I think Michael, I think Michael would run to a linebacker if he was 40 feet away from him off to the right in the middle of the open field because Michael just likes delivering punishment. Mm -hmm. Um, He's, he is a contact magnet. Absolutely. But uh, Beck Beckham, much better first half. We all know the troubles oh, he had. Oh, absolutely. Last week, poor guy, just any time that left his hand, it seemed it was going to the other team, whether it was his doing or just, just pure bad luck. Um, but much better tonight. They seem to be under control, like playing in front of the home fans. And, and overall, I'd say that's a pretty successful first half here for Coach Lane in his home debut as the Westfield Hornets head coach. Absolutely. Just like you said, the, it would have been easy after last week to give up, but the effort these guys have shown is impressive, to say the least, in this first half. And you hope to see that they can, they can keep it up and pull out of here with the first win of the season. And Yeah, have. it would be very nice to see. And um, I think they're, they're trending in the right direction. What do they say? The biggest improvement is from game one to game two because now you know where you stand. Um, you know, they, they kind of got a, a rude awakening. Um, we got that title up there. Okay. Oh, Brett's telling me I'm I'm not good. All right, Brett. <laughs> sorry, sorry, BT. He's watching us. Brett Taylor is on his way to Louisiana so that he can watch the Georgia Southern Eagles. Red uh, stick. There you go. Baton Rouge. There you go, Brett. How's that, buddy? We're getting there. Um, but overall, you know, you're, you're proud of what uh, Westfield's done so far and. Again, since we didn't have a chance to kind of go through our sponsors earlier, Brent kind of mentioned them as we went along. I want to go ahead and run through them once again. So first off, I want to thank the Westfield Booster Club, Sonic Drive-In, Houston Healthcare. Thankfully, we haven't had to see them tonight. It's always a good thing we don't have to have the trainers come out too much. Sonobis Securities, thanks to Mr. Chris Kinnis and Miss Mary Jane Kinnis. Middle Georgia Orthopedics, the ABE Group, of course, because we are here in the ABE Group halftime show. The Flint Energies, as we'll be presenting the Flint Energies hit of the game. And Michael Fitzpatrick's always in the running just when he shows up on the football field for that award. Spillers Orthodontics. And then the Woodland Subdivision. Planners First Bank. The Amos Family, as they sponsor our opening kickoff 
and or coin toss, excuse me. And then the Swanson restaurant, we'd be remiss if we didn't thank Brad and his staff there at the Swanson. We stopped by there on our way here. I had the meatloaf and collard greens and what I have, broccoli and rice casserole. Got to hit up the salmon. Said it was awesome. What'd you have, Brantley? Yeah, I had the I had the country fried steak. There we and go. That was, uh, and Peyton was Josie had delicious. the grilled chicken, I believe, yeah. grilled chicken breast. So Peyton joining us here tonight. Maybe we'll see him the rest of the season. Scott's younger brother. I won't say little brother because I think he's got you beat. And he, well, that's pretty close. Y'all are, are pretty close, the same size. But uh, <laughs> that's Brett's brother-in-laws. They're more dedicated to this than BT. Aren't you? <laughs> just hating. That's me. I'm just hating, Brett. I'm just hating. That's Brett. what happens when you're not here. You just you That's don't it. get a chance to defend. I yourself. know. I had to go visit family during the broadcast when y'all did the state title game for basketball, and I, I distinctly remember Mr. Taylor giving it to me pretty good on that <laughs> broadcast. So he's owed. That's but, that's uh, a shame. That was a fun day. The bas the basketball state championships were a great time. Yeah, good matchup. Now you got, uh, what, Anthony Edwards on the University of Georgia, number one mm -hmm. player in the nation. So pretty cool. But here in this one, 7-6 to six is your score. Got about 12 minutes left in the halftime break here. What we will do is we'll take a break and get a word from some of our sponsors. And then when we come back, we'll talk about what we think might be the keys to the second half. So with that said, we'll take a break. You're watching Hornet football right here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. The Middle Georgia Sports Network is excited to bring to you another year of live prep sports action. Whether it's on the gridiron, the diamond, or the hardwood, MGSN has you covered. For the past seven years, we have been there for region championships, state championships, and everything in between. We look forward to another seven years of coverage, as you can always count on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. successful outcome is the ultimate goal for every team. At Houston Healthcare, our team of healthcare professionals is also dedicated to providing successful outcomes to the patients we serve each and every day. From Houston Medical Center, Perry Hospital, or one of our three med stops to the sidelines and locker rooms of our high school athletes, our team is focused on providing quality healthcare that leads to successful outcomes for the patients we serve. Houston Healthcare, advanced medical care closer to home. On the field, a successful outcome is the ultimate goal for every team. At Houston Healthcare, our team of healthcare professionals is also dedicated to dentist. Our family dentist just mentioned that he had a severe underbite and he could require surgery in the future. We immediately made an appointment with Spillers Orthodontics. They brought up Invisalign. Dr. Spillers was very informative and all of the staff was very helpful and knowledgeable. Anybody who thinks that their child is too young to use Invisalign, they're wrong. I mean, if you can prevent any kind of surgical procedure for your child, wouldn't you want to do it too? Spillers Orthodontics, where great smiles begin. Tate was going right. At Westfield, we have different clubs that you can be in. You can choose between like a variety of clubs. There's like culinary arts, there's key club, there's green team, there's try high Y. I'm currently involved in theatrical productions at Westfield. I'm involved with the school's one act and several plays like Clear Club and Try High Y and Key Club, and I also dance. For Christmas, we decorated Christmas trees and we decorated door decorations for the nursing homes here in Perry. And we have also, I've gone and cleaned up some of the parks around um, Perry. Community service is definitely valued at Westfield. Well, I like how Westfield is uh just the, uh, the family atmosphere that we have here. Uh, the teachers are just great, the coaches are great. Even though I was not here when I started school, I came in and it was like everyone acted like I had been here the whole time. It's an environment where everyone just accepts you and wants to get to know you like they would have known you like all of their friends that have been here since the beginning of grade school. I just like the atmosphere that you have here. Everybody, they truly care about you. 
Everyone in my grade, we're so close together. Um, I think of them as my brothers and sisters almost because they know me so well and I know them so well. I think the most important thing that happened to me um, while I spent my time in Westville is that I actually become a Christian and then um, I actually find my faith and, um, and, and, I, and I think Westville gave me such a great Christian environment that I can actually have the freedom to express my faith to Welcome back to this ABE Group Halftime Show here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. Next, Kenny and I are going to give you some, where are they? Where keys are they? to the second yeah, half. Keys to the keys to the second half of the game. <laughs> we're going to say that. Well, these are. were our keys to the game yeah. brought to you by Middle Georgia Orthopedics yep. before the game. Um, and Brent, you know, running through there, I know your eyes aren't the best, so I'll read them to you. And Brett, Brett uses the, the worst uh, font known to man. I, I have a hard he, time. He really like, does. He should start using wingdings. It's about as, uh, <laughs> as clear as that one. But win the turnover battle. Well, Westfield's up one right now. Are they? Well, I think it's they even. They aren't, but one, one turnover was effectively a punt. It True, was fourth but down. They, also, they went for it. They also oversnapped. Oh, yeah. So actually, You're they're right. negative. Establish right. a run game. They've done that. They have done that. Smallwood with the long run. Give the defense a rest. It has been a lot longer offensive drives for Westfield, mm -hmm. so that's helped and build confidence. And I think they've built some confidence. Yeah, a 40-something yard run by Hunter Smallwood will make you feel like you can win the game. And Westfield <laughs> certainly is right now. And I know we're a half late, but just so you can take a look at what the starters look like to start the game. And those are brought to you by Synovus Securities. At quarterback, it's Beck Beckham. The running backs are Michael Fitzpatrick and Hunter Smallwood. The wide receivers are Hunter Hancock and Walker Young. The tight end is Robert Kinnis. Left tackle, Carson Mathis. Left guard is Cole Miller. Center is Colby Hill. The right guard, Clay Wilton, Walton, excuse me. And the right tackle is number 30, Braden McDaniel. On the defensive side of the ball, it is at the two cornerback positions, Walker Young and Hunter Hancock. I'm going with a single safety tonight, that's number three, Hunter Spence. Linebackers are number 31, Austin Tumlinson. Number seven, Michael Fitzpatrick, Clay Walton, and Robert Kinnis. And Cole Miller and Cal Langston are playing the defensive tackle positions. And the outside defensive lineman at defensive ends will be Braden McDaniel and J.B. Bearden. So all those are brought to you by Synovus Securities. I want to thank Mr. Kinnis and Miss Mary Jane for their sponsorship of that. But here in the ABE group, what, what are you looking for here in the second half, other than a uh, hopefully much more flawless broadcast than what we had in the first. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? I, I want to keep. I want to see this Westfield defense keep the intensity up. They've played very well so far. The only touchdown, the only points they've given up, came on a five-yard drive. Other than that, they've been super effective tonight. And you know, if they shut out in the second half, like I believe they're capable of, Westfield will win this game. Yeah, I mean, uh, anytime Deerfield's on the schedule, uh, that's their rival. I mean, that's just no matter what the sport is, these teams have a long history together. We've, we've seen a lot of big games played between them and Coach Lowe and Coach you know, Ronnie Jones, a lot of respect for one another. Coach Lowe's still there. Um, and now Westfield with their third coach in the past four years. Um, but they just play – like I said, it's one of those things I equate it to because I'm a Georgia Southern fan. I know that doesn't equate to everybody, but it's one of those rivals that you dislike but you respect. Absolutely. It almost goes to that Under Armour commercial I think they talk about mm -hmm. with like Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. Yeah. They bring out the best in you. Find, find somebody who's committed to beating you. Right, and that's what the thing is with these two teams. While they don't get along on the field, nothing's dirty. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing's you know, obscene yeah, coaches. Had a, had a relatively clean game tonight. There's yeah. only been one personal foul. And and the other thing is these kids know each other so well because they play every sport against each other. So, and I'm sure they play on travel ball teams and uh, different all-star games against one another. And, and that's what you like to see. It's just a good matchup. Uh, Deerfield's always going to be in the mix. Uh, they've, they've won a, a lot of state championships, been very successful down there. And Westfield, you know, for a long time was kind of like the little brother. They broke through. Uh, about five years ago, and since then it's been pretty much neck and neck. And uh, tonight, Westfield leading seven to six, hoping to come up with a victory. So we got ribs down at the snack bar, right? Yeah. yeah so that's what it, 
Ms. So, Langston so, up here letting us mm -hmm. know. So she's – how about the Lady Hornets softball? When's the next game? Um, Wednesday or Thursday next week. Wednesday or Thursday next week. Undefeated, number three ranked team in the state regardless really? of classification. Ooh. So they are and in the nation. In the nation. They're ranked in the nation, but number three in the state of Georgia behind East Coweta and somebody else. I can't remember. East Coweta is the best team, but, I mean, they're ranked above, you know, Brookwood, Parkview, all these other teams. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the area and you want to come out and watch some good softball, definitely come out and, and if watch you're not in the air, If you're not in the area and you want watch to watch us. some good softball, we are going to have the broadcast for you. As long as Brett's uh, back and can run the computer. Yeah, absolutely. So As long as we get a new HDMI cable for our camera. Exactly. Cause that, was, that was the biggest issue. Yep. Once we figured that problem out, we were good to go. Yeah. Uh, but we're about two and a half minutes or so from the second half. And I believe Westfield started with the football. They did. So yes. they will be kicking off to start the second half. So, Brent, any final thoughts here before we take a break and come back from halftime? The one thing I want to see Westfield do, I want to see them get takeaways. I think if they can create turnovers in this second half, they'll come out with a win tonight. So we'll see if they can do that as we will wrap up this ABE group halftime show. I want to thank Mr. Williams and Mrs. Williams as they're the sponsors here of this halftime show. We'll take a commercial break and come back with more right after this on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. The Middle Georgia Sports Network is excited to bring to you another year of live prep sports action. Whether it's on the gridiron, the diamond, or the hardwood, MGSN has you covered. For the past seven years, we have been there for region championships, state championships, and everything in between. We look forward to another seven years of coverage, as you can always count on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. The Middle Georgia Sports Network is excited to bring to you another year of live prep sports action. Whether it's on the gridiron, the diamond, or the hardwood, MGSN has you covered. For the past seven years, we have been there for region championships, state championships, and everything in between. We look forward to another seven years of coverage, as you can always count on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. Successful outcomes to the patients we serve each and every day. From Houston Medical Center, Perry Hospital, or one of our three med stops to the sidelines and locker rooms of our high school athletes. Our team is focused on providing quality health care that leads to successful outcomes for the patients we serve. Houston Healthcare. Advanced medical care closer to home. To his dentist. Our family dentist just mentioned that he had a severe underbite and he could require surgery in the future. We immediately made an appointment with Spillers Orthodontics. They brought up Invisalign. Dr. Spillers was very informative and all of the staff was very helpful and knowledgeable. Anybody who thinks that their child is too young to use Invisalign, they're wrong. I mean, if you can prevent any kind of surgical procedure for your child, wouldn't you want to do it too? Spillers Orthodontics, where great smiles begin. At Westfield, we have different clubs that you can be in. You can choose between like a variety of clubs. There's like culinary art, there's key club, there's green team, there's try high Y. I'm currently involved in theatrical productions at Westfield. I'm involved with the school's one act and several plays like Fair Club and try high Y and Key Club, and I also dance. For Christmas, we decorated Christmas trees and we decorated door decorations for the nursing homes here in Perry. And we have also, I've gone and cleaned up some of the parks around um, Perry. Community service is definitely valued at Westfield. Welcome back here to the Hornets Nest, getting ready to kick off this Woodland Subdivision third quarter. Westfield leading seven to six, and I think we have all the kinks finally worked out. I hope so. Uh, so far, so good. Knock on wood. We, we, we shall see, but uh, much better. We've had to improvise a lot of different uh, players tonight uh, in different roles. Uh, we know the camera's a little bit cockeyed a little bit, but, I mean, there's not really much we can do about it. Trying to fix it. I don't think there's really anything we can do. 
But hey, we're on screen. Yeah, I think, I think our tripod is what's messed up. I think it's leaning. Yeah. And like that part of it. The leaning tower of Pisa. Uh -huh. So hold on. Let me do this one. No, it's come uh, down this way. Like that. There you go. That's it. Yeah. There that's, you go. That's, that's perfect. Oh, well, look at it. Now you can extend the leg. Yeah, we're making it happen. That's we're it, making man. it happen. We normally have our cameraman upstairs, and now we've got him right beside us because that's the only way we can get it to work. That's it, man. That's perfect. No Dutch tilts today. This is football. Is, this is not an art film. Don't know what any of that is, but all righty then. A Dutch tilt is it's a camera angle. Don't worry about it. Gotcha. Sounds awesome. Eh. I'm not a big fan of them. Westfield received the ball to start the game, so they'll be kicking off. Ryan Fitzpatrick is set up. Everybody's set up, but the officials are still talking at midfield. We'll get ready for this Swanson House Restaurant kickoff. That's good eating right there. If you're in Perry, look for the Swanson. No doubt. Awesome and delicious. So thanks delicious. to Swanson. So now it'll be Michael Fitzpatrick kicking it away. As soon as go. these officials break up. There they go. How about the field? Coach Chip Champion's got it looking great. Oh, it looks there. great, doesn't it? Down there, we came in Wednesday night for the softball game, walked over here, and, uh, you know, it looked fantastic. And I had Coach Lane, all the other coaches out here painting the lines. And yeah, I, I love the black drop shadow on the numbers. I don't know if you can see that oh on yeah. camera, but there's just a nice little, little shadow. Mm -hmm. Just something extra. Fitzpatrick's going to kick off from the far hash. And we are ready to get this second half underway. And the kick is very deep. Fielded at the one-yard line. Going to take it out. Better make a and tackle he, here. Yep. Ooh, drag him down. Yep. That's a good way to get hurt right there, but I don't think he, anything folded up underneath him. Nope, it's going to be first and 10 there at about the 36-yard line. Yeah, he's a little banged oh, up. Oh, yeah, he is. Ow, oh, that's an ankle. That's number 19. Let me get a name on him. Yeah, it's just like you that's said, Brent. Garrett Watson. Garrett was kind of ridden down, almost like he you know, jumped off a, a, a horse onto a calf and was riding him down to the ground. And <laughs> What? You know what I'm talking about? Come on. No, I've never I've been watching too much Yellowstone, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you, you jump on the horse, you jump on the, the calf and kind of ride it down like that. You oh, know? Like, like you're – And that's how they tackled him and his leg got Like caught. you're wrangling a calf. Okay. Or it's like a rodeo thing. I got you. So we got a Houston Healthcare injury, injury timeout. timeout. I'm trying to figure it out there. There we go. Throw that up there too. Why not? And with that said, we will take a quick break, and then we will come back with more – in just a moment, you're watching Hornet football right here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. The Middle Georgia Sports Network is excited to bring to you another year of live prep sports action. Whether it's on the gridiron, the diamond, or the hardwood, MGSN has you covered. For the past seven years, we have been there for region championships, state championships, and everything in between. We look forward to another seven years of coverage, as you can always count on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. The right leg had to be carried off. Yeah, he's Or at least supported okay. off. First and 10 here at the 36. Pitch to the running back, got a hole. Still going into the secondary. Nobody can bring him down. I'm not sure what happened there. Michael Fitzpatrick was lined up to make the tackle, and he kind of just olayed it a little bit, and mm -hmm. runner was able to get 15 yards or 13 That's yards out of the 49. Ashton Mann. And it looked like Deerfield's O-line wanted to go hurry up right there, but they will huddle. Yeah, we saw last week Westfield gave up a touchdown on the opening drive of the second half, and you'd like to see him toughen up a little bit here and try to keep that from happening two weeks in a row. That's going to help there as there is a – there's a flag, maybe too many men in the huddle. I don't know what it was because the side judge looked at the referee. Okay, he said offsides in the offense. That's not really yeah. the correct call, but we I'm thinking it should be a false start. Or was he just lined up offsides? I think, I think it was. That's at odd. any rate, it's a five-yard penalty. And be first down and 15 from the 44-yard line. 
As you mentioned earlier, Brandon, hasn't really been a whole lot of penalties. So it's been a fairly clean game, but not what you want to see there if you're Coach Lowe in Deerfield. Quarterback will keep it around left end. Oh, laid the tackler, and look at that foot speed. And he's finally shoved out of bounds. And there's a penalty, late hit, I think out of bounds. It looks like it'll be a number 50, Levi May. But it may no. not have been. And there's Fitz a Patrick came out of there. Did he? Yeah, that's unfortunate for Westfield because that was a big run, and Tomlinson was right there. Tomlinson, I mean, he was there to make the hit, but he just got outran, and then you're going to attack on 15 more afterwards, most likely, here after the play. Yeah, well, let's take a moment to admire the foot speed of number 12, Parker Jones. He turned the corner and was gone. He is. I mean, he's, he's quick, but like I said, Westfield had a defender there. They just didn't make the tackle. That'll, that's going to be basically a 25-yard gain after it's all said and done, maybe longer, because it's about a 13-yard run or so, wasn't it? No, he was in first and 15, so he got about 18 on the run. Yep. An additional 15. Westfield defense has got to buckle up right here. They they fell apart in the second half of last week's game. They can't afford to do that today. I don't know where they got the yardage there. If that, I thought that happened yeah, after the run. I I don't know. That is strange. I, I thought it'd be about the 22. That bend back play. Worked well for Clemson last night, didn't it? Yes, it did. I, I feel like there wasn't a whole lot that didn't work well for <laughs> Clemson last night. I didn't even watch that game. I just saw the final score. Yeah, their first or second touchdown was one where, the, you know, Lawrence kind of ran towards Etienne and mm -hmm. handed it back off to him to the right and mm -hmm. took off. So that was a gain of eight. Right now, Deerfield just eating up the yardage on the ground, and there's a penalty flag. Very little resistance so far from this Westfield defense. I wonder what the penalty call will be. Uh, was there some chirping going on? On sportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, I didn't see anything. I so think it was on Hunter Spence. He, yep. he signaled number three. Something we couldn't hear. Well, this is not what you want to see coming out of the locker room. You played a very strong first half. Yep. And now and you've come out here and – Hunter Spence is going to get pulled for this play. Well, you came out here and now you've picked up – you've given him, what, 30 yards of penalties? Something like that, yep. I mean, that's just not what you want to do. No, that's – that is – He must have said the magic words, whatever they were. Uh -huh. So first and 10 now at the 11. Fake to the fullback, option keeper, and that is bottled up, still on his feet, and finally wrestled down. Good job reading that option play by the Hornets, and there's another flag after the play. My goodness. Is that on Westfield we, again? I don't know. Somebody's helmet came off, a Deerfield player. That's the quarterback that time. That's tw number 12 over there. We were talking about how this is a relatively clean game, but this drive has made us li made liars out of us. No kidding. So it is a dead ball, personal foul on Westfield. On Westfield. What is this? What is going on? Goodness gracious. I mean. What's going on right now? Westfield's got to get their heads in crazy. the game. I mean, they're just letting them walk down the field right now due to their own efforts. I mean. I mean, they, just, they've, they've been successful on offense, but you're not helping yourself at all, just giving them free yardage, even if it's not much because they're so close at this point. And that bend short. back play is going to be just short, but that actually was not an automatic first down. It'll be first and goal from the two now, I think. No, it's second and goal. They, well, no, you might be right. I think you're right. Now I, I had now it. Now it's second down and one. They've still got the – yeah, they you're still right. got the 10-yard markers out there. I don't think these referees are officiating the spots and everything correctly. I a personal foul. I have no idea what's on going a first on. And 11, first and 10 should be a first and goal. Hand off to the tailback, and he dives in for a touchdown. And he just split right there. Westfield had two defenders, Kenneth and Sam Johnson, and just – Turned sideways, got skinny, and now they take the lead here. Yep, 12 to seven. That was an ugly defensive drive for Westfield. Too many, too many penalties. Too many penalties and too much yardage given up during the play. Let's see if they go for two here. Try to make it an even 14 with 9:35 left to go here in this Woodland Subdivision third quarter. 
Well, that's two straight weeks now. Westfield's given up the opening drive of the second half on a touchdown. And it looks like they will go for two here. Rolling out. Red oh. well. No good. Incomplete. Good job. Yeah, Tomlinson was right there, and good job as the two-point conversion is no good. So why don't we take a quick break here with Westfield down 12-7, to your score. We'll be back in just a few moments as you are watching Hornet football right here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. A successful outcome is the ultimate goal for every team. At Houston Healthcare, our team of healthcare professionals is also dedicated to providing successful outcomes to the patients we serve each and every day. From Houston Medical Center, Perry Hospital, or one of our three med stops to the sidelines and locker rooms of our high school athletes, our team is focused on providing quality healthcare that leads to successful outcomes for the patients we serve. Houston Healthcare, advanced medical care closer. <laughs> we got cicadas welcome, flying welcome around here. Back. That was a, a big old cicada. Massive cicada that Kenny was kicking around. Think poor thing couldn't fly. Just now got I tossed know out why the window. You hear those noises, you know, because oh, yeah. clear as day. Mm -hmm. This is the time of year where they come flying around and that kickoff is going to go out of bounds. That'll be an illegal procedure penalty. And again want to thank the Swanson Restaurant for their sponsorship of the kickoff. So go check out the Swanson here in Perry. This offense has got to pick this defense up. That that was not a good drive for Westfield defensively, and you got good field position here starting at the 35. Yeah, Brett watching the game on his car ride and saying basically this is a mirror image of last year's game. I think, Brandon, it might have been the first game you came over here with us and Westfield, or no, that was Southland. I'm sorry, uh, Southland. Westfield forced like six turnovers. I remember. I remember y'all telling and me still about couldn't that. Couldn't win, but this one they haven't forced as so many turnovers. But they're behind on the scoreboard, even though they feel like they've outplayed them. Quick pass. Good move. Yep. Well, not and much to gain though. That's not going to get out of that young man's tackle. Now, nah, good it's catch. Good move man. by Spence and. Good job by Evans Plowden, and I feel like I've called his name a couple of times tonight. Starts at linebacker and tackle. Well, mainly because it's just such a cool name. I mean, Evans Pl Plowden. How Pl cool is that? Plowden. That is that is a it's pretty that awesome. is a tackle name if I have ever heard one. Yeah, I mean, you get you're born to be a linebacker, right? I mean, what's your <laughs> name? Evans Plowden. So second and five. Here at the forty. Deerfield's coming out in kind of a 5-2 look here. A couple of yards gained on the handoff up the middle. That's Kenneth on that carry. He's and a he looks to be up. shaking up just a little bit. I think he got kind small, of... Smallwood just kind of yanked him up, said, you're staying in. Yeah. I like it. We haven't mentioned it yet, a new uniform combination for Westfield. I like it, too. Green helmets, green tops, and black pants. Pretty cool. I mean, Westfield experiments a lot. You know, having Adidas as a sponsor... Uh, Adidas is always on the cutting edge of doing some cool things, and I like the look they got going. Kind of look like a little Michigan State style. <laughs> Third and two for the Hornets. Driving back to pass. Little pop pass. Oh. No. Incomplete. He had the ball and got it jarred loose. What a hit. Big hit for Ashton Mann. We Interestingly, he doesn't start anywhere for the Knights, but he's been all over the field tonight. Well, you know, that play worked very well last week against Terrell Academy. It was a big play, and probably it, one of the few they had. It almost worked right there, just the hit knocked the ball loose. Yeah, safety doing a great job getting in there and putting the shoulder cleanly right in the rib cage and jarring the ball loose. Fitzpatrick out the punt. He's already faked the ball twice. Better snap this time, a little high, but better. End over end punt, fielded at the 25. A little bit of a crease, and he'll be tackled at the 37. Will be first and 10 for Deerfield Windsor there. Yeah, 8.03 left to go in this third quarter, and not the answer you want there for Westfield after seeing the Knights go down the field and score a touchdown. You go three and out on your returning possession. Yeah, had, had some success, had a chance at a first down, but... It wasn't in the cards, and now this defense has got to step up after their sloppy last drive. 
And they got good field position here, does Deerfield at the 38-yard line. And the last drive was just disastrous for Westfield, both just due to the inability to stop them from positive plays and then the four personal foul penalties. Now and it looks like we got a false start. Looks like a false start. Feels like a false start. They blew the play dead before it ever started. Tell you one thing, that side judge seems to have a pretty open dialogue with Coach Lowe over there on a regular basis after he makes a call. He's always looking back over his shoulder to him. Well, you're, you, are, you are in your rights as a coach to ask the official why he made the call he made. And if the official feels like he is able to explain, I feel like he should. Yeah. Now, granted, I've never been a football coach and I've never been a football official. That's just how I feel as a, uh, a former player. And fan. And fan. So first and 15. Yep. Handoff, fullback led, and that play went nowhere. Great play there for Westfield as they were all over that one. Yep. Great job. Feels like a linebacker just stepped up and plugged the hole where that was supposed to go, and the defensive linemen were there to assist on the tackle. That's what you want from defense. Second down and 16. So... They lose a yard, and again, they're. You'd love to see Westfield come up with a stop here, maybe even force a turnover, get some momentum back on their side. They let it the break seven to six. Trail here, twelve to seven. Pitch to the running back, the old Leonard Fournette play, as I call it, and that one's bottled up too. Yeah, the Atlanta Falcons actually do that same play, that kind of wide toss. It looks like it's going to go to the edge, and then they and cut then it back right up the goes middle, straight up the middle. But. You know, there's a strong point on this Westfield defense. It's right down the middle, and the defensive Absolutely. line. Absolutely. That linebacking core you would think would be the strength of this defense. And they got a pretty good defensive line, too. Uh, you got some height on the outside, not the, not the, the biggest guys size wise, but that height. And then on the inside, you got some, some beef and some, some strength. Mm -hmm. Third and long here. Third and 13, says the scoreboard. Oh, Bootleg to the right. He's open. Oh. 87, that is Joe Morgan. Called his name a lot of times tonight. Finally gets a catch, and that is a first down. Well, that's a big comfort to a quarterback rolling out to look down the field, and then you see big number 87. I don't know how tall he is. I'm guessing he's 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 something in yeah. that. Like I said, when I was range. down on the field earlier, he, he carries himself like a big tight end. He is at I'm least 6'4". With that number, I'm guessing he might be a uh, Gronk fan. Oh, absolutely. And if, you, if you're a tight end, you're probably a Gronk fan. Why not? Yeah. But he looked like Gronk there. Got open, and on a long third down, they convert. Handoff up the middle, and that one stopped. Great play that time. That was J.B. Bearden in the defensive end position. Coming in, making the hit, and maybe a yard gain. Yeah, plugged up. JB. Always good for a defense when they try to run up the middle and you meet him before he gets back to the line. You know, talking to JB's dad a little bit during the summertime, you know, JB keeps so busy. He's playing basketball. Then he leaves basketball, come here to play football. So you know the young man's got good conditioning, and he's doing a pretty good job at the defensive end position. A little option Option on the pitch, ball's on the ground, and Westfield has it. No. I think Westfield has it. Nope. Third down. Nope, they're going to they're gonna spot it right there. Yeah, he. I thought I saw number 24, Clay Walton. I thought I saw him fall on that ball. No, that was number three there. He had it. He, Clay might have had his hands, but three there had it underneath him on his belly. And so you kind of just, by default, <laughs> got awarded it, I guess. Yeah. When you got simultaneous possession like that, it's the whoever has player. more possession. Yeah, and I guess the belly's bigger than the hands, right? Absolutely. Third down and 16. 16. Big play there for Westfield. Now they got a hold. Last time they gave up a long third down conversion. Yep. Play action and quarterback keeper up the middle. Oh, again. And he is into the secondary. That is a first down. He's going to have more. It's a foot race to the pylon. He dives in. Well, Touchdown. We lost it behind the pole there. No, nothing we can do about that. But, yeah, just Westfield again, a 52-yard touchdown run on third down and 16. So the third down defense has not been there for Westfield on this drive. They did a good job and then nothing after that. Parker Jones has shown his ability to run the football tonight and he just showed it off again there. Had him dead to rights but couldn't wrap him up and tackle him and tack on six more for Deerfield. 
So 18 to seven. See if they go for two, or they're, now they're gonna bring out the field goal kicker. So they're gonna try to just go for the the one. But 18 to seven, your score. Second halves are not the fan, or Westfield has not played too well so far in week one and week two. It's a shame too, because they play so well. In oh the yeah, first the, half, the first halves of both anyway. of these games have been pretty good for Westfield, but the second halves have left a lot to be desired. And, and he is. doinked it, and it went through. Huh. Well, he earned it. The, the old Cody Parkey special. There you go. I'm a big fan of Cody Parkey, by the way. Well, I don't think the city of Chicago is. It's no, 19 absolutely. to seven, <laughs> though, as they score another touchdown. Do the Deerfield Winter Knights? They lead by 12. Westfield's got to do something soon, or. They could be in trouble. We'll take a quick break watching Hornet football here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. He was going regularly to his dentist. Our family dentist just mentioned that he had a severe underbite and he could require surgery in the future. We immediately made an appointment with Spillers Orthodontics. They brought up Invisalign. Dr. Spillers was very informative and all of the staff was very helpful and knowledgeable. Anybody who thinks that their child is too young to use Invisalign, they're wrong. I mean, if you can prevent any kind of surgical procedure for your child, wouldn't you want to do it too? Spillers Orthodontics, where great smiles begin. Welcome back to the Hornets Nest. Westfield just went down 19 to seven. Five minutes left to go in this third quarter brought to you by the Woodland Subdivision over there in Kathleen. And again, this is the Swanson House kickoff. Unfortunately, we've been calling that too many times for Deerfield here in this quarter. At least it's really good food. That's it. Kickoff will go very deep over the head of the returners and bounce in the end zone. Westville will have, let it, have it at the 20. I started tripping over my own words there. That's all right. Uh, you know, Westfield just needs to get some momentum going here on this drive. It's been – they've only had the ball for a split second, it feels like, here in the second half. They went three and out. Deerfield has eaten up, you know, almost half of this third quarter, and they've seen their one-point deficit turn into a 12-point lead. Very important here if you're Westfield to get a touchdown going into the fourth quarter. Good news is Westfield is only down two possessions and there's 16 minutes left in this game. Almost 17. Almost 17. 16 minutes, 54 seconds. There you go. Toss to Smallwood that's going Kinnis. outside. That's Kinnis. And that's a late hit. Yep. Number eight came in there with the shoulder late. That's William William Fox, the defensive end. Well, Westfield helped them down the field on their drive that they took the lead on. Maybe Deerfield can return the favor here and get Westfield moving. Yep, down and that the other will way. be a first down brought to you by Planners First Bank. Big thank you to Planners First Bank for their sponsorship of the first downs this season. Got any banking needs, loans? Mortgages, anything, car loans, whatever you need, go check out Planners First Bank in your area. So Westfield gets the benefit of the personal foul, and it'll be first and 10 out at the 37-yard line. Westfield has to score on this drive, just getting some momentum back. High formation. Give to the fullback up the middle, and he will carry the pile ahead for a good six yards there. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you who he owes it to, and that's big number 50 for Westfield. And that's Seth Andrews. What a block there by the sophomore at the right guard position. He just rode that defensive tackle six yards down the field and Smallwood right up his back the whole time. Someone other than me talks about good offensive line. You like play. that? I love that. I'm telling you. I love I get, that. You give credit where credit's due. That's the brand. That that's, is the brand. That's when the brand. other people start talking about it. I mean, you know. It's not just me. Private school football, the offensive linemen aren't the biggest of guys. Well, hey, so listen, ne neither were we at Perry. Well, that's true. I went but to Perry High School, and we were not the biggest. Option qu quarterback keeper, he's got a big hole going for the corner, and he will have the first down and is undercut at midfield. I like that play. I do, too. Uh, I'm that a that option, pit, option out of the shotgun, just the quarterback and the tailback. Hopefully we see that tomorrow down in Baton Rouge for my Baton, Georgia Southern Eagles. Baton Rouge. A little shy works running to the outside, maybe yeah. working some magic. Yeah, I hope he has a lot of success this offseason after what, at, during this season after what happened to him in the, happened to him in the offseason. That's a, oh, a the crazy old, story. The old bird poop 
Yeah, uh, the, bird, the bird poop cocaine? Yeah. You know, it's that special brand that they only have in South Carolina, <laughs> apparently. Wow. What a story that is. But first and ten, that's another Planters First Bank first down for Westfield. Driving back to pass is Beckham. Quick out. Caught. What a move. Ah, he should Shoot. have went outside. Yeah. Still good but gain. Lowered his shoulder and got a good gain out of it. We'll say eight yards. It'll be second down and two. Why they, why they blow the whistle? I don't know. Oh, there's a penalty in the backfield. Oh, maybe roughing the passer. Possibly. Hopefully. Yeah, that's what, this, what Mr. Dale just said, roughing the passer. So that will give Westfield 30 yards of penalties on their own right here on these last uh, three plays. So both teams aiding the other with penalties. Yeah, Westfield finally putting together a good march down the field here. Another planter's first bank first down for the Hornets offense. There they are. Look at that logo. It's a beautiful one. PFB, baby. Especially when they write checks. That's it, <laughs> my man. If anybody wants to write us some checks, we have some spots open. Get in contact with us. There you go. Let's go. Let go. Marvin James. That's it. Hand off up the middle and uh, good bottled tackle. up. Got him around the ankles and didn't give him a chance to kind of get those feet going. That was number eight, I believe. Number eight, Coleman Williams, a freshman out there getting some varsity action. Did a great job and only picks up two, so it'll be second down and eight here for the Hornets. As we're winding down, two minutes, 38 seconds to go in this third quarter. Beckham drop back, drops back to pass, throws that quick out, and it bounce bounces off his hands, incomplete. Hunter Spence is your intended target. Tried to come back to the ball, but I think he heard the footsteps. Well, you know, Beckham, we talked about last week, obviously threw a number of interceptions, but his receivers aren't really helping him out a whole lot. He had one earlier that I think it was to Kennis, where if he hung on to it, that might have been a touchdown. Absolutely. Kennis is going to come out, and Fitzpatrick's going to come play some more running back. That's a big frame he's got. Probably would do well with an oxygen tank on the sideline. I don't think he got one, though. Bootleg out to this left side, looking for someone to throw to. Caught, and he kind of stood there for a second like he was confused as what to do with the ball. I don't think he was eligible. That's Braden McDaniel. Yeah, I, I don't believe he was eligible. I don't. And I don't is, know. That's what the Deerfield coaches are arguing right now, whether he... It was intended for Fitzpatrick, I think, because he was right next that, to him. Well, that explains why McDaniel didn't run right away. You know what I mean? Yeah. He kind of stood there like, uh, that was not supposed He's to come to me. Number 30, Braden McDaniel. Yeah. He's a defensive end and an offensive lineman. Yeah, Braden kind of knew right and there. That's, He's like, uh, that's why. Not me, not me. That's why... <laughs> It, at most say, he, levels of football, offensive linemen have to wear a certain set of numbers. Yeah. And 30 is not in that set, so this may have confused the officials a little bit. That's pretty funny. That, but, I mean, yeah. the way he caught that, you could tell he was you guilty. Tell, like, he the, was like, there was like uh, oh, no, that, I wasn't the ball is now that. in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And we'll see. Oh, and the ref no, let him get allow away it. it. Well, he's, he's a tackle. I guess if no one covers him up, he would be legal. Uh, I guess. Fourth and two? I'm not sure what the ruling on that is. Third and two. I think it was fourth. It was third and eight. Oh, was it? I got fourth and two. All right. Okay. I was saying third down and two. Man, Westfield got a bonus on that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm Threw not it to sure. the wrong guy and, oh, no. busted play. Did he pick up? And I now don't it's know. He, one. Okay. he picked up something. That was a busted play. Yep. I think he thought that Smallwood was going to follow behind him, and Smallwood thought it was an option to the left. It's a shame he didn't pitch it to him because he had acres over there, had one man to beat. And now Braden McDaniel is going to come back in. And he's like, got away That's with one. <laughs> <laughs> 62 is going to stay out there. They're, gonna, they're swapping in and out offensive linemen. That's a new one. You don't well, see that very often. No, Westfield does because on occasion just because they have so many guys going both ways. 
and they'll call a timeout lest they run out of lest they run out of play clock. We'll take a quick break and get back to you with the finale of this game here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. At Westfield, we have different clubs that you can be in. You can choose between like a variety of clubs. There's like culinary arts, there's key club, there's green team, there's try high Y. I'm currently involved in theatrical productions at Westfield. I'm involved with the school's one act and several plays like Clear Club and Try High Y and Key Club, and I also dance. For Christmas, we decorated Christmas trees and we decorated door decorations for the nursing homes here in Perry. And we have also, I've gone and cleaned up some of the parks around um, Perry. Community service is definitely valued at Westfield. Welcome back here to the Hornets Nest. Westfield leading a, dri a long drive here, but it is stalled at fourth and one and we're waiting a decision to see what'll happen. No, we're gonna have a measure. measurement first. So we'll see if, uh, how close they are here on this one. I don't know if you can get tight on it. Uh, I don't called you Scott Payton. I don't know if you can get tight down there on that, the measuring. We'll see if you can get a tight shot. I don't know how, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, it's gonna be short by about a yard. Yeah, yeah, about a football length, thereabouts. Yep. Oh, that's a full yard, good call. We're at that It'll offset angle, but Fourth hey, down and one. If only you had a big bruising fullback. Yeah, if only that, hey, you know what? In the <laughs> pregame, we saw him taking snaps. I'd say get do the, do, the old, do the old Cam Newton wildcat package and just have him take the snap and run forward. Don't even worry about a handoff. Yeah. Just have him catch the ball and run as hard as he can. I think that's good there. Well, you should be able to see it perfect. Fourth and one, they got Fitzpatrick in the fullback position and Smallwood there at the tail. And they will go straight eye formation. Oh, and, and they jumped. A false start. Yep, two people jumped. Left side of the line that time, McDaniel yep. and... Tried, tried to get Deerfield to jump, and I don't know if they would have or not because those offensive linemen couldn't hold their water. McDaniel and Colby Hill both jumped on that left side of the line. Right now, a field goal doesn't do anything for you, so you still got to go for it because, I mean, 19 to 10, that's not really... Still two yep. possessions. Tell you, I might try to do that, the old hut-hut play. Try to get it right back? Uh-huh. That's what my mom calls it, the hut hut play. Well, it's going to definitely change the play call for sure. Absolutely. They're in an entirely different formation. Rolling out to his right will throw. Intercepted. And that was not what you needed right there. Well, that, that is turnover was set up by the previous play with the offensive line jumping Absolutely. outside. Gleaton, so. Gleaton Jones, the linebacker with a pick. So That's not what you wanted. I understand why Beck Beckham had to make that throw. That was not 100% his fault. But you need something better on that play. Yeah, I mean, you're running out to the short side of the field. It kind of bunches everything up and just makes it a little tougher to work with. You had just a jumble of people all right there and it's so unfortunate for Beck because he just adds to his total of, of picks. But again, that play was that drive was determined on the play before, in my opinion. A little late getting Absolutely. on the field here. Yeah, they didn't have enough people. Number 53, who is that? I'm going to call him out. That's Evans Plowden. Evans Plowden had such a good game, but hey. now I had to call him out for making a mistake. Hey, he makes so many good plays defensively. He, yep. I guess he was like, hey, look, I just need a drink, man. Hey, I want to take – I don't know if you saw that play, but Clay Walton right there, that was – he ran up, filled that hole, and dumped the running back on his head. If he hadn't done that, it would have been a huge gain. As it is, three about yards. three yards. And it'll be second to seven. As we're winding down here in this third quarter, brought to you by the Woodland Subdivision in Kathleen across from Veterans High School over there off Old Perry Road. Go check them out. Beautiful homes out that way. If you're, if you're looking for a new house, that's a great place to go. Pitch to the right side. And a hold Tackle for a oh, minimal Michael. gain, and it feels like a holding penalty is going to occur here. Yep, and then Michael got himself a personal foul on top of it. Well, you would think 
I think those off penalties would offset. Well, I'm not sure. Michael got yes. held, and now got some cramps going down on the field there, the tailback who made yep. the run. Preston Jones having himself a, a good game so far. Starts both ways for the Knights. And he's having a having a Charlie horse out there. Yeah, I and think it's going to be never fun. offsetting penalties here probably. You had a hold, in my opinion, on the offense. It kind of slung Michael. Uh, Michael, not to be outdone, came and jumped right back on the offensive player. Yep. And he's going to get pulled for this yeah. next play. Mike's Mike's a, uh, you know, he's got some rage built up. Quiet yeah. assassin. He's he's a good player. He's football smart, and we know he carries yep. the ball well. There it is. Just like I said, a hold on the offense. Personal foul, grasping the face mask on Fitzpatrick. So that should probably be offsetting. But Mike's was after the play. That is true. So the officials are going to have a discussion. They're going to mark back 10 yards, or, and then they're going to go forward five. Coach Lowe out there trying to work with the line judge over there on the far side, trying to tell him, look, man, you go back 10, you go forward five. So move us up five, and it's third down. So it should be third down and two here at the 40. We're still waiting on a – I mean, that makes sense, oh, right? It, yeah, it, I mean, it's it, a, makes, it's a it makes sense to me. I, I, it's a I net gain of five yards. You yeah. lose the down. Or actually, no, you keep the down. I'm sorry. Because yeah. the holding happened during the play. So it should be – I confess, I don't know the rule, Burke, Burke, rule book backwards and forwards. Well, it's math. I mean, I hate to say it, but it really is. All right? Walk back ten yards, okay? That's the holding penalty. Then you had, and that was during the play, so it's still the same down, right? It was second down. Now you go forward 15 yards, and that's just a five-yard gain. So it should be second and two. And it, looks like, it looks like that's where they've marked the ball, and that's what the scoreboard says. They kind of That is where we will have this next down, <laughs> I do hope. As there's only 23 seconds to go. Math. It's great. <laughs> Math. I'm not taking any math classes right now. <laughs> That's the great thing about college is whenever you get into college, you, you get to choose what classes you take. They might not even run a play here. Yeah, it was just standing <laughs> over the ball. And they're going to let it run down. That is, that's never fun. I've, I've been in that situation as an offensive lineman. You have to hold your stance for a good 30 seconds. Yeah, because it's, it's not what, fun. Yep, we're going to run on down and get ready for the fourth quarter. And that's it. So after yep. three quarters of play, your score, Deerfield 19, Westfield 7. We will take a break and come back with fourth quarter action right here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. Well, I like how Westfield is uh, just the, uh, the family atmosphere that we have here. Uh, the teachers are just great, the coaches are great. Even though I was not here when I started school, I came in and it was like everyone acted like I had been here the whole time. It's an environment where everyone just accepts you and wants to get to know you like they would have known you like all of their friends that have been here since the beginning of grade school. I just like the atmosphere that you have here. Everybody, they truly care about you. Everyone in my grade, we're so close together. Um, I think of them as my brothers and sisters almost because they know me so well and I know them so well. I think the most important thing that happened to me um, while I spent my time in Westville is that I actually become a Christian and then um, I actually find my faith. And, um, and, and, I, and I think Westville gave me such a great Christian environment that I can actually have the freedom to express my faith to. Welcome back here to the Hornets Nest. The Planners First Bank fourth quarter getting underway here with a handoff up the middle. Number number three, Gleaton Jones will carry for the first down. Be a first and ten from the 40-yard line. Westfield down 19 to seven. They need to show a little initiative here on defense. The clock is running, and they are down two possessions. Yeah, now's the time you try to hold up running backs and go for the strip. 
I mean, you got to hold them up, come in, yep. try to rip the ball out and create a turnover of some sort. You wouldn't imagine Deerfield's going to put the football in the air with a 12-point lead in the fourth quarter. Not too much, though. Everybody in tight. Hand off to the motion man. Ooh, almost reached in there. Yep. Good flag, tackle there by Robert Kennis. Robert Kennis, he's, he's been a little bit overshadowed by his brother today, but he's had some had, – he has played pretty well. Yeah, he gets the tackle there and keeps it a three-yard gain. I'll tell you what, though, he was very close. He, he grabbed him right around where the football – where he was holding the football, so – Good awareness there from the running back hanging on for dear life. And Deerfield is coming in with everybody right up on that line. Motion man. They will give it to the other guy on the reverse. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. Good hit. And somebody loses a helmet. Yep, there's yep. another penalty on Westfield. Who was Ash that? That's Ashton Mann is not a very big running back, but he is powerful. Yeah, he delivers the boom. I think that was Fowler down there, Andrew Fowler, who ripped the helmet off of an offensive lineman after the play. Personal foul. Westfield has had way, yeah. way too many of those Yeah, tonight. way far too many for an entire game, and they didn't commit one until the second half started. I mean, they probably had six, seven. I mean, they had four on that one drive. They scored a touchdown. So at least six. That's terrible. And terrible. a timeout by Westfield. Next week we will be on the road at Southland Academy down in Americus where we will have our eardrums ringing because they set their band right up below us and yes, they do. let the drums go crazy. Yep, They but sound really good, but they are right there on us, so you will be able to hear them firsthand. And here's your broadcast team for next week. Brett Taylor. <laughs> the end. That's it. He's doing everything. He's running camera. He's running the computer, and he's doing play-by-play -play and color. He's going to be like that monkey that does the cymbals as with his knees and the drums and listen, you know, all that listen, stuff. If he remembers the headphones this time, that is true. I we don't promise, need to make a, a Walmart promise run. I'll do one quarter. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go eat hot dogs at that place downtown. Monroe's. Monroe's, Monroe's. down in America. I got to listen. And Brent will do the game all by himself. <laughs> My grandparents live there, live down there in Americus, and yes, sir. My parents live, my grandparents live down there in Americus. It's where my mom grew up. I've been to Monroe's more times than I can count. It's good stuff. I, really I good made stuff. a lot of visits to Monroe's hot dogs. We hit it up last year on the, the way down, right in next the to playoffs. the Rylander Theater. Well, the fans are trying to get behind the Hornets here, trying to tell them, "Hey, quit hurting yourself." Basically. I mean, that's really what's going on. Fans trying to will their team to a victory. It is 19 to 19-7, Deerfield. This game is still very much within reach, even though it feels like Deerfield has dominated the, f the second half. Well, at most, you can only allow a field goal here. Absolutely. You give up a touchdown, and it's ball game. Hand off up the middle. Good, Good hit. That's, that's that a perfect form tackle right there. That's... That's a video you need to show kids when you say, this is how you tackle, do it safely, and do it hard. That could Michael be Fitzpatrick with our a nominee for the Flint Energy's hit of the game right there. I mean, just like you said, wrap and drive, and that's exactly what he did. Yep. Kept his head up, put it over to the side, cut off any cutback lanes. It was a, a tackle of beauty. Rob Fitzpatrick, I don't know what he's like in pass coverage. Haven't seen him do it much this year. but Well, Rob, he just chose a towel on the sideline, but well, Michael – <laughs> Michael Fitzpatrick. I don't know why I'm saying Rob so much. I, I've done one baseball season. Well, it's Rob the man. I mean, he was King Orange, I believe, at the field day or pep rally, whatever it was. Way to hang on for dear life right there by Hunter Spence. Singletary there on that carry and going to bring up a, what, third down third and down six? Six, maybe seven looks like. Long six. I don't know the length that their field goal kicker has. but if He's they, looked shaky today, I will say. From this point, if they do not pick up another yard, it's about a 38, 39 maybe yard field goal. So this could be two down territory is kind of what I'm saying, or four down territory. Give oh, good that job. Uh, quarterback he got kept it. Ooh. Neat. 
flipped in the air a little bit. But they did hold. It's fourth down, yep. and it's about three yards to go. They had a chance. The first man on the scene could not make the tackle. But Kenneth finishes them off. Now fourth and three. Looks like the offense is going to stay on the field. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of in no man's land here. It's uh, about a 36-yarder from this point. Probably the biggest play of the game for this Westfield defense to this point. Yeah, you got you got a man up here. They did not do well on third down in the third quarter. They gave up two touchdowns. And now you got a fourth down situation here. You got to got to bear down. Oh, they're just trying to get in the jump. Yep. That's all they were doing. Doing a little Paul Johnson type move. So timeout on the field. We will take a quick break with them as the Hornets trail by 12. You're watching Hornet football here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. Tate was going regularly to his dentist. Our family dentist just mentioned that he had a severe underbite and he could require surgery in the future. We immediately made an appointment with Spillers Orthodontics. They brought up Invisalign. Dr. Spillers was very informative and all of the staff was very helpful and knowledgeable. Anybody who thinks that their child is too young to use Invisalign, they're wrong. I mean, if you can prevent any kind of surgical procedure for your child, wouldn't you want to do it too? Spillers Orthodontics. On the field, a successful outcome is the ultimate goal for every team. At Houston Healthcare, our team of healthcare professionals is also dedicated to providing successful outcomes to the patients we serve each and every day. From Houston Medical Center, Perry Hospital, or one of our three med stops to the sidelines and locker rooms of our high school athletes, our team is focused on providing quality healthcare that leads to successful outcomes for the patients we serve. Houston Healthcare, advanced medical care closer to home. Welcome back here to the Hornets Nest. Westfield trying to come up big for a defensive stop here. It is fourth and four on the 19-yard line. They need a they need a big play here from this defense. Run a little wing T. Motion man, give it to him on the jet sweep. They're forcing him outside. What Great a great open field tackle. Hunter ran Hancock. him down. Hunter Hancock ran him down, wrapped him up, and flung flung him to the ground. That could be your play of the game right there as they're going to force the turnover on downs. Hancock just kept stringing it out, stringing it out, using that sideline as the 12th defender and knew Kenny, that he had some backup for the cutback lane. Kenny, I got a question. What's up? Why on fourth and four do you, go lateral? Do you run a jet sweep? Yeah, that's... I understand you're running a wing T. Listen, I ran the offense we ran when I was in high school was the wing T jet series. Every play we ran was based off of the jet sweep to the left and the jet sweep to the left from to the right from under center. Well, but it, questionable, but I mean that's that's a questionable play call in my eyes. Rolling out. Oh, my off gosh. his hands. Hunter Smallwood had it in his hands, but he dropped it. Yeah, I mean that would have been a tough catch. You had a defender there, but that was a really good throw. I mean, on the run it across was. your body, going against your you know your throwing arm, but just uh, couldn't come up with it. Now second down and ten. Still 8:23 left to go in this ball game. We'll see what Westfield has up their sleeve here. I need to get something going. Need a touchdown badly. Big play here would be nice. Four wide receivers. Oh, watch Heavy out! Heavy rush up the middle. No, he caught that ball. No, what? No, he around. dropped it. Okay, oh. that's unfortunate because there was. I can't. I couldn't tell who it was, but somebody was open. But a great play by Evans Plowden. That's a, that's what the go. sixth time I've called his name tonight. Yeah, he's kind of been the defensive MVP for Deerfield here tonight. He's made a lot of good plays, but just I'll be honest with you, it's just an ill-advised pass that time. And now what? I mean, we got he, a penalty. Was, he had a passer. Oh, roughing the passer. So that's going to be an automatic first down, or not an automatic first down, but uh, by virtue the of the yardage. Yeah. And I'm imagining that was number 37 coming around the end because he had a clear shot at him when we were watching, and he had to get rid of it in a hurry. Interesting thing I just noticed down there on the sideline, Walker Young is a starter for this Westfield team, but he's down on the sideline on crutches right now, hasn't been in there at all tonight, and I was wondering why, and now we know. That's he's a shame, too. He's a speedster that mm -hmm. you can really utilize. Quick out, caught. Wrapped up and tackled, but a good five-yard gain. 
Oh, and a and couple there's flags. A couple of flags. There had to be some jawing going on over there. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but Coach Lowe and, you know, everything we talked about in the third quarter at halftime about these kind of good sportsmanship that's been going on, yeah, they kind of made us look like fools here uh -huh. in this uh, third and Hunter, fourth quarter. Hunter Hancock is adamant that it's on the Knights. Somebody said something to him because he got hit pretty hard. But, yep, on the Knights, and that will be a first down. Another 15 yards on top of the five that the play got. You know, I I understand you got to keep the game in check so things don't get out of hand, but when you, you go know, back I, and look at the, the final tally here, you're going to say, how many personal fouls are they called? Yeah, I but, jeez. You know, we can't hear what's being said down there. We don't know what the verbiage is, and that looked like someone said a magic word as quickly as those flags came out. Yeah, because there was two of them. That's at least 12 of them, it seems, tonight. Oh, woo. Oh, there you oh, go. missed tackle. Speeding down the sideline. Oh, That's a face that mask. Flag. Yep. There you go. There's a couple yards more flags. That. that was a horse collar. He got right inside of his shoulder pad and mm -hmm. yanked it down. Great camera work that time. Hunter Spence well with a big catch and run, made the first man miss, and then got 15 extra yards on the tackle. I keep calling him. Yeah. I keep calling. I want to call you Victor. I wanted to call you Scott. I'm not going to call you Rachel. <laughs> so we'll go with Peyton. Your God-given name. <laughs> uh, that is a personal foul horse collar. They called it a face mask, but it was it was in it, the shoulder I think, pad. I think I think you could have had either one yeah. there. That was. I think he his started on the face mask, finished on the shoulder pad. <laughs> he had he had one hand on either apparatus, and that is a first and goal from the eight. Well, this is just what you wanted for Westfield. I mean, this is the big play you wanted. Some penalties from Deerfield. You've moved down the field really fast here 759 I think you started this drive with what 854 so I mean in less than a minute your goal to go at the eight yard line yep and your defense has shown you shown you they can come up with a big stop so you feel comfortable kicking off here if you score toss to the left and that's going to go nowhere yeah great job that time by the Deerfield defense they just really held the line and and set the edge Kenneth had nowhere to go with that one so he's going to lose yards back to the nine we set, <clears throat> excuse me, second and goal from there. I wonder if they're going to maybe throw the football here, seeing as the clock is not their friend right now, and they're at the nine-yard line. Haven't seen Fitzpatrick in there at running back in the past couple plays. Yeah, I think they might be saving him for defense. Fade route to the end what zone. He caught it. He caught that football. What that is a, a touchdown. I know, folks, we apologize, but there's a bar right there. Just and there's, believe us. There is a night hurt in the end zone. The defensive back on that play looks like he got landed on, and he is holding his knee. That is the play of the game right there. If you were, what a play. First, Hancock makes the tackle on fourth and four to start this drive, and then he comes back and makes a beautiful catch in the end zone for the score. We have an injured knight on the field. And that is our Houston Healthcare injury timeout. And again, we hope that young man is okay. We'll take a quick break while they take a look at him. But Westfield has closed the gap a little bit. And we'll come back for the extra point here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. Tate was going regularly to his dentist. Our family dentist just mentioned that he had a severe underbite and he could require surgery in the future. We immediately made an appointment with Spillers Orthodontics. They brought up Invisalign. Dr. Spillers was very informative and all of the staff was very helpful and knowledgeable. Anybody who thinks that their child is too young to use Invisalign, they're wrong. I mean, if you can prevent any kind of surgical procedure for your child, wouldn't you want to do it too? Spillers Orthodontics, where great smiles begin. Tate was going regularly to his What I like about Westfield is uh, just the, uh, the family atmosphere that we have here. Uh, the teachers are just great, the coaches are great. Even though I was not here when I started school, I came in and it was like everyone acted like I had been here the whole time. It's an environment where everyone just accepts you and wants to get to know you like they would have known you like all of their friends that have been here since the beginning of grade school. 
I just like the atmosphere that you have here, everybody. Welcome back to the Hornets' Nest. Hunter Hancock catching the fade route on to get for a Woodland subdivision touchdown. I tell you, you don't see the fade route work often, but that time it certainly did. Great job by Hancock. And Westfield has made this a one-possession game all of a sudden with seven minutes and 13 seconds left. PAT try for Michael Fitzpatrick. It is up and good. Deerfield leads Westfield 19 to 14. Now this one's gonna come down to the end here. This is a good ball game with 7.13 to go in the game. Over half a quarter and now Westfield right there with a chance to win it. So if you're the Hornets right now, come out and play some good defense. I mean, there's really, yeah. Your defense has stepped up a couple of times today and they've looked bad at other times. So you, you're hoping you get a step up right here. In my opinion, the leader in the clubhouse right now for player of the game, the Sonic player of the game, has got to be Hunter Hancock. He made the tackle on the fourth down and four play, then comes yep. back down on the other end and makes the big touchdown catch going up the ladder against the defender. So, sorry, stretching out a little bit. So we're going to have the Swanson House kickoff here in just a moment. As we're here in this Planners First Bank fourth quarter. And all this brought to you by Brandon Ford of Perry. I want to thank Ben Brandon, Jared Brandon, Mr. Phil Brandon, and the rest of the staff over there, Mr. Bearden, for their sponsorship and enabling us to bring all this Westfield action live to you here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network. I don't know how good Michael Fitzpatrick is at onside kicks, but if I'm Deerfield, I'm looking for one here. Yeah, I don't I'm know. You don't want to give him a good field position. Squib will work, will though. Knuckle it. Uh -oh. That ball still on the ground, and he covered it up. Woo. He covered it up. That would have been something right there. Yeah. I, th I think there were a couple of other Deerfield-Windsor players around the ball, but still, that's too close for comfort. No doubt. So now it'll be first and 10 here at the 26. I like that move because then that doesn't really give them a chance to, you know, come up with a big return. You're going to get it to one of the guys who's maybe not the speediest, so to speak. Yep, and they will take the ball over on the 26-yard line. Well, Tell you what really swing the momentum here is a turnover. Yeah, that would be ideal for the Westfield Hornets. Now they can't be as conservative here. Yep, they can't They can't just run the ball on every down. You think they'll run it more than they throw it because that's just their offense. But Good job. Back, and that is stuffed in the backfield. That's number great 30. Braden McDaniel, Braden he's had McDaniel. a great game. Mm -hmm. Even if one of the plays was illegal, <laughs> we still don't know. The ref said it was legal, so. That's it. So second down and the 12. The only thing I can think is that he wasn't covered up on the play. That's the only way I can think that play would be legal. That's true. I have no idea. I guess you don't have to declare yourself eligible at this level because, you know, they don't have the certain numbers like you were talking about. Mm -hmm. So second and 12. Second and long quarterback has it, being chased. There's a flag, feels like a hold, still running. Cuts it back, to, cuts cross back the field. And is finally gracious. wrestled down. That's coming back though, yeah. yeah I think yeah. I would think. The white hat's the one who blew the blew the whistle. Yep, He's telling the down down and distance guy to stay where he is. Yep. Holding. Holding on Deerfield. So that'll erase a huge play. But man, Parker Jones is having himself a night. Yeah, he's very elusive. I mean, he's kind of one of those uh, you know surprisingly good athlete. You see, like, you got him tied up, and then boom, he's, there he goes. He's sneaky. Sneaky. He's sneaky, crafty. sneaky, sir. He's crafty. So that'll be second down and what, 22 now? About. Oh, my gosh. Where are they going to put the football? Very, very far nine? back. So second down and 27? Wow. Second down and a long way to go. Don't be comfortable if you're Westfield. You've given up big gains on downs and distances like this before. Long way to go. Country mile. Down to six minutes. Halfway point of this third, fourth quarter. Hand off up the middle to the fullback. He's in open space. Ooh. Gets cut down after about a seven-yard gain. That's a big tackle there from Kenneth because big man came rumbling out and that could have been a big play. 
It's a third and a mile. What, about 18 to go? About. Somebody beating a drum or something down there? It's the, the cheerleaders are taking their megaphones. Oh, uh, okay. Second down at 27. No, more less than that. They 18. 18. Third down and 18. They're at the 19, and they need to get to the 36. So third down and 17. I'll tell you, math is a beautiful thing. I'm bad at it. Third and a ways. And they're going to throw it. Yep. Throwback screen. To. Throwback oh, screen. It's it. on the ground, and it was incomplete. I don't know. They're saying it was behind the line and a backwards pass, and he's going to be yep. tackled. Might have had the double pass on right there. So that Number was actually a run. Yep. Number 24, Her Heron Bettis was on the field, and he was going deep. So fourth and long. And why is – oh, the clock's running because it was a backwards pass. I had to think about it. Yep. That actually worked to Westfield's disadvantage that time. <clears throat> so Either way. 21. Good field position chance here for Westfield. Yep. Line drive. Spence got to get that football. Going to pick it up, running around, mm. and it's swarmed. He got hit hard on that play. Yeah, letting it take that second bounce, I think, kind of threw off his timing. If he was able to get it on that first big hop, could have caught it with some momentum. But how about the fans getting behind their yep. Hornets here? Big drive here. Four minutes, 22 seconds to go, and you're down by five. Beautiful night for football here in Perry. Love to see it end with a Westfield victory. First down and 10 from right at midfield. Driving back to pass. Comeback route. Going towards the middle. Eludes a man. And it'll be second down and one after a gain of nine. But then they got a get back warning there on the far side of Deerfield sideline, the far side official. So that'll just be a warning. Mm -hmm. So second and one. Yep. He's thrown that little stop route really well tonight. He has, and they've they've stayed off of it. Has Deerfield? I don't know if I would throw it again because you've had so much success. They, they might, might come jump up. It. Yep. So you might see a stop and go. Oh wow! They gave him the Planters First Bank first down. Never mind. And there you go. I tell you, Hunter Spence has had himself a whale of a game. Yeah, he's played pretty well, too. Beckham back to pass, throwing that route what again. A grab. Ra fought mm -hmm. through the footsteps and made the oh. catch. And now they're going to throw a flag. He must have said another magic word. These refs do not tolerate trash talk. I don't think it was trash talk. He just kind of reached in from the backside and tried to rip it out after he was down and was getting back up. Goodness gracious, there have been a lot of penalty, pa personal foul the, penalties. The Hunters have had themselves quite the game tonight. Yeah, Spence and Hancock. Mm -hmm. After the ball, after the play, personal foul on Deerfield. That'll tack on another 15 yards. Goodness gracious. And Westfield will say thank you very much. Well, it's been evened out. <laughs> yeah, it has. I mean, Westfield was the team committing all the penalties on personal fouls in the third quarter, and it's been all Deerfield here in this fourth quarter. Four minutes to go. Clock will start running after they set the ball. And they're at the 18-yard line in the red zone here. Right at four minutes left to go. Westfield needs a touchdown right here. Hand off up the middle to Smallwood. Dragging, dragging some guys. Finally moves the pile. And he was dragging our the main man there. Evans. Evans. Evans Plowden. He had a handful of jerseys holding on for dear life. Was that a gain of five? Looked like it. Second down and five. Uh, honestly, if you're Westfield here, you want to score, but you also want to run out the clock, you know, take your time. Yeah. You have time to run the ball and pick up chunk yardage. Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick back in yep. there, yeah. We saw it at the same time. Option run. 
Pitch it. Oh, oh hey, no. He didn't oh. handle the pitch, but Ooh. he fell on it. He fell on it. That, that is a dangerous play. Well, you know, if Brett were here, he'd talk about it, so I'll go ahead and say it. That's the, the pitch relationship there was not the proper – Distance, distance. Yep, and, they were and way kinda, too close to each other. Yeah, so that threw that whole timing off. That's a danger when you run the option to the short side, is you you bunch up and you don't really have anywhere to go, and then the ball is suddenly on top of you. Well, obviously it's three down territory or four down territory. Yeah. Oh, obviously. So third and eight, that loses three. So you want to, you don't have to get it all here, but you'd like to see at least four, maybe five yards. Make it a lot more manageable on fourth down. You'd love to see eight. Yeah, exactly. Just or a touchdown. Dropping back to pass. Well, a little throwback. throwback they got screen. The, he got it blocked block. up. Missed a block, and he oh. scrambles for it. McDaniel and Braden just McDaniel, Braden missed McDaniel it. just missed a block, and if he had it, that's a touchdown. Dang. They had the play call. But McDaniel, rather than kind of locking him up with a block, he kind of lunged at his knees trying to chop him down and just missed. Fourth down and five. This is a must-have for Westfield. Here's your game right here. Absolutely. Clock is under two minutes and running. Westfield's lost so many of these games last year just like this. They got to come through. I feel like it's their time. They deserve it. Tell you what, Smallwood, a little skinny post, wide open. They don't have that covered. Snap to Beckham. Rolling. Oh, that's Out route. It. Yep. Tackle is made, and there's your game. Tackled short. That was just not. And that'll do it. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, yep. That's I don't know if I'd go side, you know. I I don't I don't hate running there. an out route because you've had a lot of success with it today, but that was too shallow a route. Yeah, you got to run it to the sticks. Run it to the sticks and then make your break. So they're gonna kneel on it here. Uh, Westfield's got two timeouts, minute 26, but um, they won't kneel on it. They'll be able to run it, but a first down definitely ends the ball game. That's a shame. Mm -mm -mm. Yep. Now this Westfield defense has to keep the running backs up and strip the ball. And Westfield or – nope, Deerfield's going to burn a timeout. But we could stay here, Brand, and, you know, that's just unfortunate for Westfield. What a good drive they had. It was aided by some penalties. They had, what, two personal fouls on that drive, at least one. But they just could not – get the big play when they needed it most. The field kind of shrunk up, and, you know, they got a little nervous on the play call there and just did not work out for them. That's a shame. Maybe they can have a miracle turnover here or something. They need one. For Josie, sure. and I don't think he's having a problem with it either, though. He just wishes he had his own car so he could go home. <laughs> but he stepped up. He helped me out big time when we were trying to. Yeah, he was an invaluable piece of getting the stream up and working. So, let's see what they do here. Like I said, a, a first down, and it's pretty much over. So, Everybody bunched up onto the line. They will run play here. Quarterback keeper setting the edge. Stopped him for no gain, and they will immediately take a timeout. So they get about, what, two yards? Out to the 14-and-a-half-yard line. Let's see. What's that? Oh, sorry. So, yeah, it'll be second down and about eight, maybe seven. Westfield now with just one timeout left. Don't forget to stay tuned after this for the Westfield Booster Club postgame show. All right, we'll go through some of the honors of the game in which we'll – give out our awards for the Sonic Drive-In player of the game, as well as the Flint Energy's hit of the game. All that during the Westfield Booster Club post-game show. So they can stop them here. They obviously burned the last time out. And then we'll go from there. Brent, the Braves have let the uh, White Sox come back 6-5. Yeah, to five. I saw that. I saw that. And the Nationals just retook the lead on the Marlins 5-4. to four. Both of the games are in the bottom of the seventh. The Braves do have the bases loaded with two outs. Do they? Who's up to bat? Uh, 
Uh, don't know. I'll have to check that out for you, sir. And they will and kneel they the just ball. Scored. So, a Danny Echeverria knocked in two runs. That away, Danny. He's been a good pickup for the Braves. So that will be third down and eight. And Westfield's going to burn their final time out here, I believe, or the yeah. referees are going to meet. There's what are a they flag. Doing? There's a flag on the play. Let's see what Coach Lane's going to see what his options are here. They may choose to decline the penalty and take the down. I wonder what I don't know what the penalty is. So a dead ball, false, false start. start. Okay. And they will reset the play clock to one minutes and twenty second. Or what? the game, game clock. One, one minute and 20 seconds is what I just said. One minute and 20 seconds is what they will reset the game clock to. Well, it's not what we want to see there for Deerfield. False start on the play that you're kind of trying to run the clock out. Yeah, you're really, you're really just trying to protect yourself. You don't have to do a whole lot. and You're more or less hoping that one of those linebackers comes crashing through after the play is dead because it gives you a first down. Knifing through, and he's going to take a knee now. Make it third and 13. And Westfield still got that one timeout. I guess they're going to try to wait until this next play. I mean, they could have a chance here. Yeah, it'll be it'll be very tight. Looks like there will be about 30 seconds left. Yeah, right at it. This punt goes on. Po punt is taken. And you never know. I mean, a block punt and falling on it in the end zone, something like that. You know you're going to get good field position, so you'll have a chance at a Hail Mary. Well, now there's a f another flag. False start false again. False start on Deerfield again. So that's an automatic stoppage of the clock. So now to this next play, there'll be 40 seconds left instead of 30. That's kind of sloppy, but you love to see it if you're Westfield. Yeah, I mean, now they're back at the three. Oh, yeah, and there this will be a very, very hard kneel down to take. Yeah. Oh, uh, and that! Oh, oh my goodness! There's a fumble. It looks no, like a they're fumble trying to get with the, the safety, but they're going to call a personal foul. Yeah, false, false start. start on Deerfield again. Westfield is uh, making this line struggle, and it looks like some of these Deerfield players are losing their cool with their teammates. Yeah, I don't know. This is quite possibly the longest inning or ending of a game I've ever seen. And it looks like Westfield wanted a fumble because they were pointing towards the goal line instead of making the signal for a safety. Yeah, they're pointing, saying that they had the football. But 39.8 seconds, so back to the original 40. And there's, I don't know what's going on right now. Well, they're fixing the clock. Yeah, 39. Bum, 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 bum. There it there goes. There we go. That's a fantastic job by Mr. Jimmy Beeland over there. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you saw what we did tonight when we got when we got uh, stressed. We just crumbled. Jimmy came up in the clutch. And Deerfield's going to take a timeout. I mean, they got third down and 19 or something from the one and a half yard line. Yep. They have no timeouts left. Westfield still has one. Deerfield's Ooh. doing their best not to fall apart right now. This would be one heck of a way to end a game. It would be very, very You know, very if, I'm, if I'm Deerfield, I may, take a safety? I, yeah, I may take a safety on the punt, tell my that, punter run around, that get might, the snap, run around as hard as, as, that far might as be you can, what they take a safety. might be what they're talking about, to be quite honest with you. Because then they can punt it from the 20. Yeah, I think they are. That Brent, that's a very good observation, and that's what uh, the, some of the others are talking about up here. You take the risk out of it. Yep. You know, and it, it, a safety doesn't hurt you. You're down. Or, you're two points. Well, you know, don't you really do. Don't, well, even, don't even line up with a quarterback and just have him snap it through the back of the end zone. You know what I mean? Well, you, you still want your punter back there to field the ball. No, and I'm run, saying right now, run a little bit of time out there. Something. 
Fans are irate about something. Well, Coach Lowe was out there on the field. I don't know if he was picking something up off of the field or what. Oh, my. That don't feel good. No, that's not fun. Uh, timeout? Yeah, what, are, what are we waiting on I here? don't know. Why is Westfield not taking a timeout? What is Westfield Coach doing? Lane, Coach Lane is not taking a timeout right now. What is? Uh, I don't, I don't know. He's not making any move to. I'm looking at him on the sideline right now. They must not have one. They, they have one according to the scoreboard. And we'll run out. All right, I'm royally confused. I, I am lost. I am absolutely lost right now. What happened? I don't know. But they're going to let the clock run out. That's and there's your ball game, 19 to 14. Deerfield Windsor is your victor here tonight. We will go right into our Westfield Booster Club post game show. We will name our Sonic player of the game. Kenny, who do you think? I got to go with Hunter Hancock. Uh, that's just me. I think he had a great game tonight. Uh, he came up with a big fourth down stop, and then he made the big catch in the end zone. And he is my Sonic Drive In player of the game here this evening. And Brant, how about that Flint Energy's hit of the game? You know, I think you honestly have to give it to the same guy. That that big hit on that jet sweep on the fourth down. It ended up not costing Deerfield the game, but a great play on that on that uh, on that tackle by Hunter Hancock, stretching that play out and making the open field tackle. So Westfield loses here tonight. Your final score is 19 to 14. Tough loss for the Hornets. They dropped to 0 and 2. They will be on the road next week at Southland Academy. So for Brant Daughtry, Scott Josie, Peyton Josie, I'm Kenny Colford. Thanks for bearing with us tonight as we had some difficulties, but we made it through. And we will be back next week down at Southland. So for the rest of the guys, I'm Kenny Colford. Thanks for watching. Westfield football here on the Middle Georgia Sports Network.